What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Now today I'm going to be trying out the team I'm bringing to the IC uh, or the Players Cup qualifiers, uh, but I'm going to be testing it on the official ladder rather than the IC ladder, and that's because I don't want to start my matches until I live stream them tonight at 5 or 5.30 p.m. CST. Uh, you can actually check out the link to my Twitch in the description down below. My rating's pretty bad right now because I, you know, decayed a lot from the last time I played and I lost a few matches when I tried to use that Chansey team. But that's besides the point. If you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like and then subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content and comment down below what you're bringing to the IC. I want to know what you guys are using. What If you're using like some kind of like crazy Pokemon, let me know. Uh, I am currently using Golisopod, so yeah, comment down below right now what you're using in the IC tonight. And wow, that is a very bad ranking, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and be revealing my team. I won't reveal the full details of the team like spreads and stuff, but I suppose if you wanted to extrapolate the data from what you see on screen, you can do that. But yeah, uh, this team revolves around Golisopod being used to activate weakness policy on Colossal while providing wide guard support. And it's a very specially defensive Golisopod with a few tricks up its sleeve. So yeah, uh, it's also a hybrid trick room team, which is really fun. And there is one sp uh, specific situation where I can use Emergency Exit to my advantage. This team really, really, really doesn't like Colossal. I can tell you that much right now. Um, but as you can see, there is a Whimsicott and a Mamoswine on lead. And when I see that, there is a thing I have to do that is very annoying. I can't immediately go for the Glycopod uh, win condition. I have to play very carefully for a couple of turns. And uh, since I see a couple of very scary Pokemon, I am going to go ahead and bring Glacier and Dusclops in the back because if need be, Trick Room mode doesn't seem too bad. I could have also brought Landorus, but I'm pretty scared of the uh, Mamoswine since it's pretty likely they'll lead off that way. If they don't lead off with uh, Mamoswine or uh, Whimsicott, I should be fine to go for the Golisopod Colossal win. You know, just the very simple way to play out the rest of the match, but... Uh, if they do, I unfortunately have to scout for an eject button because eject button is one of the ways these teams like to beat the uh, Colossal lead. So having first impression on Spot is really cool because you're able to go for a plus two priority move instead of plus one, making sure that you actually beat uh, Prankster, Switcheroo, or Trick, whatever move they use on these things. It's really nice. And we do have that Trick Room mode in the back. Hopefully... Like, this is the first time I'm using this team in-game. I used it a lot on Showdown. I, you know, won a couple of Showdown Room tournaments with it. I feel comfortable with the team. However, <laughs> whenever I play in-game, it's a whole different experience. Let me know if you guys feel the same. When you play in-game, does it feel like a whole different experience from Showdown? For me, it definitely does. It's probably just because I'm bad at the game. <laughs> There's Whimsicott Moltres. Like I said, I do have to scout for the... <laughs> I do have to scout for the Eject Button lead. So what I'm going to go for here is I'm actually going to go for a raw first impression into this one. I was going to say raw meteor beam, but I almost don't want to do that. I think I'll just do it, to be honest. Maybe, maybe I'll just go for the Vocalith. They really don't like Vocalith. And if I can remove the eject button play, that'd be phenomenal. Um, even if it's not weakness policy, I should be fine here. Oh my god. <laughs> my controller's on low battery. Whatever will I do? Let me go ahead and get the plug. <laughs> Okay, got the plug. Hopefully what I can do here is plug it in without knocking my switch out of the ethernet adapter. You guys are getting some behind the scenes action right here. Let's see, they don't Dynamax, uh, which is pretty great because that means I'm probably just gonna knock out the Moltres in one hit because they might be nasty plotting, so that's cool. Let me just plug in my controller here. Boom, there we go. This controller will not be dying on me today, I hope. I think I plugged it in, yeah, it's charging. Epic, epic, dude. Go for the first impression. I have a feeling that's eject button. What I tell you, right there. <laughs> what did I tell you? They thought they could nasty plot on me, but let me tell you something. The only person getting the nasty is them. That sounded gross. I have to stop saying these things. Like, it's not, it's not like inappropriate, but it's like not right. You feel? I went for the Fiery Wrath. They really tried it. Brrrr. 
Hey, what's cool is um, even at plus two, I should be outspeeding this Mammoth Swine. So uh, I'm gonna knock out this. I'm gonna knock out this um, Moltres. Is that Focus Sash Moltres? No, it's Weakness Policy. I was like, what? So basically, Focus Sash is most definitely on the Mammoth Swine, considering the um, eject button was on the Whimsicott. So what I'm gonna do here is I should be able to one shot the Mammoth Swine with a max fire move by just aqua jetting into my Colossal now and clicking that on them. Because even at plus two speed, they shouldn't outspeed me since. Um, I'm outspeeding stuff like Aleki, I think. I, I, I don't know. I forgot what my speed tier is. But it's high. It's a very high speed tier. Trust me. There's the Cinderace. Uh, I don't really fear Cinderace because I did bring the Trick Room mode in the back. I'll go ahead and just self Aqua Jet to make sure I outspeed this Mammoth Swine. And I will Max Flare. I also shouldn't get one shot by anything the Cinderace wants to go for. Granted, this, um, like a high jump kick wouldn't be appreciated, but I think I can live it. And Cinderace will be taking rocks damage, so if I survive this turn, Cinderace should be really no issue for me at all. Yeah, when you play enough Colossal, you get used to seeing Whimsicott on lead, and then you're like, alright, well, I can take no risk here. I cannot risk this at all. I will always first impression. And I guarantee you, even though I'm saying that right now in this video, I will forget by the time I record tonight, or go live tonight. I, I will guarantee you, I will forget that rule when I go live tonight. There's the Dynamax Cinderace, not too much of a big deal. Max Knuckle doesn't do a ton of damage. And if I can set up a Trick Room on them, it's pretty much GG. Aqua Jet. Doing a significant amount of damage to myself, but it's nothing that, you know, Urshifu wouldn't have done, because Urshifu is like a more common lead for this team uh, next to Colossal. But bada bing bada boom, max flare. I think I win just by the lead I have, you know? <laughs> just by the sheer lead I have on this team, I probably win, but I don't want to call it too early. I'm notorious for saying, yeah, I probably win and then lose. Max Knuckle will do a, it'll do a solid amount. It'll do a solid amount. Not enough to KO me. Uh, however, at plus two speed, they likely will be knocking out my Colossal. I can actually preserve this Colossal. I can preserve this Colossal. It could be useful under Trick Room later on. So what I'm going to do here is actually go for a... I think what I can do is Max Guard on their Tailwind and Max Knuckle. Because they're going to Tailwind Max Knuckle here. I'm pretty certain about that. And I'll just go for... I can go for this play. I can go for a... Not very effective liquidation, like this isn't going to do anything, but it's still significant because it'll help me get the thing in range. And I can hard... Sp no, I said I would protect. I'm dumb. Max guard. And then next turn, I can actually go into my dust clops. And if I can remove that Whimsicott from the field, there's no chance of them taunting me. If they're running Tailwind and Tr Switcheroo... I'd like to assume they might not have taunt. They might have protect on there because protect is really important for Switcheroo. All right, I just want to, I need those rocks to do a lot of the work right now. I didn't get a defense drop, unfortunately. I don't know how many more turns of the rocks I have, because I did go for it turn one. And they should be going for another one of those dumb, stupid moves. Uh, let me liquidate into the Whimsicott. I could Aqua Jet as well. I might just Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet, two Aqua Jets should do it. Even if, like, if the rocks don't activate this turn, two Aqua Jets should do it. Let me go into Dust Clops here. I always forget to count my rock turns. I could have just checked, I think. Is that... Oh, it's a Salt Vest Cinderace. That's interesting. Hopefully rocks are still active. <laughs> There's the Max Knuckle. Dazzling Gleam. That's fine. That wouldn't have actually knocked me out. I could have gotten rid of the Whimsicott right now. Okay, rocks are still active, so I can set up Trick Room or whatever. Yeah, I'm good. I, I just win. Because I don't believe Pyro Ball... I mean, plus one Pyro Ball might do it, but I have so much on my side of the field that it's harder for them to win now. There's just too much going on on my side. Let me go for Liquidation onto the Cinderace. Uh, and I will Trick Room here, even though it's likely they're going to try to one-shot me with Sun-Boosted Pyroball. No, they just forfeit. Cool. 
I think they recognized that the lead I had was way too big for them to catch up. So that's nice. Uh, we managed to show off the nice little synergy between Glycopod and uh, Colossal. Actually pretty effectively. Yeah, and like I said, I just got those Pokemon in game, so they just now got the freaking thing. I remember there was like this video that he who shall not be named. Just kidding, I don't really give a crap. Verlissify posted. And he was like, oh yeah, Wolfie, his team is definitely hacked because he used Pokemon that didn't have the Master Rank ribbon. Bro, I can't tell you the amount of times I have brought Pokemon to a tournament that I bred on the way to the tournament. It's pretty likely he did the same. <laughs> like, that is not uncommon. All right. So, uh, actually a very interesting team. Got some hyper offense. Um, but what I'm mostly concerned about is that Sableye. They, they're known to be huge nuisances. However, they really don't have a Trick Room option. I might just go Dusclops. Yeah, I might just go Dusclops lead on them. I can go Dusclops Colossal. Glacier in the back. And my last Pokemon is going to be Landorus. Landorus just seems super, super solid. And the reason I'm doing this is because Colossal can function under Trick Room or... Um, it can function under Trick Room or with Steam Engine. That's uh, one of the beauties of this team. It can do whichever one. But yeah, I'm really proud of this team. It feels really nice. Uh, I'll go ahead and drop a code for you guys once Players Cup is over, or once the qualifier is over. Because even if I don't qualify, even if, if I manage to play like complete garbage, I will say this team is absolute fire. <laughs> this is one of my most successful teams I've made. Okay. Gonna face some hyper offense. Sableye Garchomp. Um, likelihood of taunt. Likelihood of taunt. Not certain. I can definitely get in my landers for free pretty much. See Roselli Berry, Citrus Berry, probably like Sword Stance. So what I'll do here is I'll try to Trick Room, see if I can actually do it. Get in the Lando. Uh, regardless, I get an Intimidate off in the Garchomp, which is really nice. And it looks like I have a solid matchup here, just by the fact that they did bring the Garchomp. Get the Intimidate off on these guys. There's the Taunt. Makes sense. There's the Dragon Claw. Curious they would go for that. Um, now, I can't go for what I want to go for here. I kind of want to... He's not going to Earthquake. There's no way he Earthquakes. So what I'm going to do here is actually go into Glacier. But also switching Colossal on what might be a Will-O-Wisp. Because I want to cycle my Intimidates. I'm going to show them pretty much my whole my whole hand, you know. They get to see the whole team. And that looks like a great opportunity to Meteor Beam. If I catch a Will-O-Wisp, I'm just going to max Vocalith. I don't care. Hopefully they don't miss. Knockoff. Okay, that's not phenomenal. I just lost my weakness policy, but I guess it didn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. It's not like it would have actually activated. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll get back in the Dusclops. And... I don't want to Dynamax, right? I really don't want to Dynamax because it doesn't feel safe at all. I want to get rid of Sableye. Hmm. I can go for a Protect here. Hopefully they don't Nasty Plot. And I'm very tempted to go for the raw Meteor Beam. It just puts in so much pressure that they might switch and I get plus one. I'm going to go for the raw Meteor Beam. As they Dynamax, which is great, uh, they should have no way of actually knocking out my Colossal. And they're kind of trapped in here with me. Since they didn't switch out the... Since they didn't switch out the... Um, Sableye. Dude, imagine if Sableye got Parting Shot. It would be legitimately one of the most annoying Pokemon to face. Prankster Parting Shot would be insane. So I am going to take some substantial damage. But I think it's worth it. Doesn't 
doesn't do too much, actually. If I miss this meter beam, I might cry just a little bit. Okay. I think I might have to Dynamax Landorus in this game. I don't feel comfortable doing that, to be honest, but um, here I will switch out into the Dusclops, who should eat the hit relatively fine. And Meter Beam will go off into Rotom. They could go for a Max Guard, but wouldn't be the end of the world, since I haven't used my Dynamax up. Honestly, I think once I get into a position where I can Dynamax, I don't think they have Will-O-Wisp is the issue, right? Um, I was scared of the Will-O-Wisp, but... Uh, I think once I get into a position where I can, like, Dynamax Glacier, even the even the Landorus, like, would be a great win con at this point, um, I should be fine. So I, I burned one turn of Dynamax, I just have to waste two more, which I should be able to burn one more with this uh, Dusclop switch. And if they, for some reason, for some reason go for a Max Flare into my Colossal, I'll be so happy, because it'll activate Steam Engine. I could even Trick Room right now. There's a chance I could Trick Room. Depending on if they Max Guard. There's the Max Guard. Meteor Beam doesn't go anywhere. Uh, but the Trick Room's free. Trick Room's free. Tell me how they stop it. Give me one example. You cannot. I mean, they, they could actually stop it, but... I can waste a turn here. Let me go for the Protect. I got my plus one special attack. I should be able to sweep them with... <laughs> with a uh, Max Flare from my Colossal now, so... Yeah, this team is really cool, because you can kind of just, like, shimmy your way through a couple of different situations, just kind of move some pieces around, and you'll find an endgame for, for a lot of different situations. I'd say the hardest matchup is Rain, and that's where Venusaur comes in, uh, but beyond that, this team is really fun. They go for Stomping Tantrum. Nice. If I take this Max Flare, this Trick Room will go up. I th Oh, they have Max Darkness. I should take that. That's non-stab. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, if that's non-stab, I, I definitely take it. So I'll go ahead and I'll Dynamax my Colossal. I'll go for a Max Flare into Garchomp, as well as... Um, as well as my... Actually, maybe I can just Heat Wave. I can just Heat Wave. I'll Will-O-Wisp and go for Heat Wave. I just don't see a point in using the Dynamax right now. When he resists pretty much every option I have. I could max Overgrowth, but I get much more out of the other Dynamax option in Glacier. So we'll just Heat Wave for damage. Whatever. They withdraw the Rotom. I'm going to do a lot of damage to Sableye. Oh no, Clefairy. Okay. There's the Protect, so I get another turn out of this. Heat Wave. Please connect on Clefairy. This is plus one in the sun. Okay, well, that that's... that's mm, Okay. Uh, let me go for a Nightshade, since they're likely just going to redirect. The whole point here is I want to get in my Glacier after losing my Colossal. I'm fine with trading Colossal for this. I just want to get the Glacier in. Because there isn't much counterplay there after that. Nightshade, going to do a significant amount of damage since Clefairy has low HP. And Heat Wave should do a lot. Connect on both, awesome. Imagine if I got that last turn. Imagine. There's the Stone Edge. Interesting play. Uh, likely trying to catch the... <laughs> likely trying to catch the Landers. And he does get a crit, which is really lucky, but... I think I'm cool. I think I'm cool. I'll go ahead and I'll Nightshade into Garchomp here. And go for another Heat Wave since it'll KO. KO the Clefairy, I mean. Once I get rid of this Clefairy, this game becomes a lot easier. And I'm not directly targeting Clefairy, because if they don't go for the uh, follow me, if they protect, I'd rather have a lot of damage on Garchomp. Garchomp protects. I still get my Heat Wave off. Let's see if they double protect. Nope. So if I connect this Heat Wave, pretty good spot. Life do okay. I really don't mind that because uh, I can actually go for a Will O Wisp next turn if I'm lucky. Actually, no, that that did matter quite a bit. Hmm. You really don't see life do too much. That tells me no protect though. 
Clefairy avoids again. <sighs> That's so annoying. Yeah, let's just get rid of Clefairy. Let's just get rid of Clefairy. I have one more opportunity to do this. I don't want to have to deal with Clefairy for the rest of the match. And I'm wasting my Trick Room turns is the annoying part. Really, this shouldn't be, like, too bad. I just have to not miss. <laughs> Nightshade. He didn't life do, which means he's forfeiting his Clefairy this turn. You know, granted, I connect. Okay. <laughs> I, I had to hope for a minute. Maybe I can get some payback with a burn? Critical hit and Clefairy didn't matter. Clefairy faints. Stomp me Tantrum, I assume. Dragon Claw. All right. That was a safe play. Oh, into Dusclops. I really don't mind that. I really don't. Here's the Sableye. I mean, I'm likely going to catch a Taunt. So what I can do here is... Go Lando. I'll go Glacier for that slot, and I'll go Lando on this slot. Because once again, if I get a second Trick Room up, it's, it's really good. I'm just trying to preserve the Colossal as long as possible. Because you never know when it'll come in handy in the endgame. Especially versus a Rotom. There isn't much Rotom can do to Colossal. Even at this low of health, like, Overheat might not KO. There's the Intimidate. And in comes Glacier. I really don't think they have will o -Wiz, judging by how they played this thing. Stomping Tantrum. Nice. <laughs> Nightshade. Not, not as nice, to be honest. Not as nice. Um, is this my Dynamax option? That's the question. I don't think it is. I don't think this is my best Dynamax option. I will Icicle Crash into Sableye. And, uh, go ahead and Max Airstream into it as well. Because I'm not concerned about Garchomp anymore. I'm mostly concerned about Sableye. Just ruining my endgame. Assault Vest Lando is 100% how I win this. They withdraw, that's fine. I wanted that. It makes it a lot easier to uh, remove this Rotom when I can spam Max Rockfall on it. And granted, they will reset their Intimidate, but it's all good. Alright, let's see if they did have Will-O-Wisp. Who knows, maybe they won't even get to click it. Alright, they will be able to click whatever move they were going for here. But it wasn't Will-O-Wisp. Probably Nightshade. Or Knockoff, either one. Knockoff, losing my Assault Vest. That could matter, um, but I don't really see it being too big of an issue. Especially when I get this Icicle Crash off. That gives me plus one. I can now go for a Max Rockfall onto this Rotom, and an Icicle Crash onto the Garchomp. I pretty much have them pinned, I think. This is a pretty nice pin situation. Do take some life orb damage. Now the thing is, if they want to protect their Rotom from the Ice Skull, or the, not the Rotom, if they want to protect their Garchomp from the Ice Skull Crash, they're forced to go for Overheat into the Glacier, which means they lower their special attack, and I probably end up winning. So I'll Ice Skull Crash into the Garchomp. I will max Rockfall into the Rotom. If this is Sandvale Garchomp and I start missing, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> I'm going to be so upset, dude. Max Rockfall. We do one shot, so that should be game. I don't really see how they come back from this. Especially with Stone Edge, they aren't likely to hit all of them, you know? Let's see if they get it. They do connect to Stone Edge, um, but I should be able to win now. I can just spam Max Airstream. And they do have Protect, right? Like, obviously they have Protect, but I can just click Max Airstream Nightshade. Please be rough skin. I'd really prefer that right now. <laughs> I'm not going to bother burning it because it just doesn't seem worth my time. Airstream. 
Protect makes sense. Nice. And I definitely want to keep this uh, Lando in. I don't really mind not intimidating them. They're probably going to Dragon Claw into the... Uh, into the boy. I could save this guy. I could sack the Colossal. Finally, you know. And go for an Earthquake here. I think Earthquake's probably my best play. So I'll sack Colossal and go for Earthquake. I don't want to knock out my own Dusclops here. And if they end up going for Dragon Claw into Dust Cops, that'd be great. Because then I definitely win. Yep, that's in range of one more Earthquake. So if I survive this turn, I win. That's pretty much how it works. Oh, I forgot about the Citrus. Ah, that's still in range. Nice. That is game. At least I think so. Pretty certain it's game. Very scared. Very, very scared. I could fly. Granted, I could fly on their protect and go for the nightshade, and that might seal me the game. But I am scared. I, I wasn't paying attention to how much my earthquake did last turn. <laughs> hmm. I'll oh, just earthquake. Whatever. I might have thrown right now. Oh wait, Dusclops 8, so yeah, regardless of who he targets. Cool, I win. <laughs> that was scary, that was a very scary endgame. I swear, if he's Sandvale. If he's Sandvale and I miss. Don't you dare, bro. Don't you dare, you better be rough skin. You better be rough skin. Okay, alright, my, my heart was like in my stomach just then. All right, cool. So we do pick up two wins today. Uh, that was a very long second game. I will give him that, but uh, that's about 30 minutes. So I'm going to call it there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you didn't notice, there was a nice Galissa Pog emote in the bottom left. I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Because once again, I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And go ahead and subscribe to me on Twitch or follow me on Twitch. Either one is great. The follow is appreciated, but the subscription is whew, it's phenomenal because it supports me directly. Um, I'll be going live at 5 or 5.30 p.m. CST tonight. Link in the description. And we'll be trying to qualify for Players' Cup 3. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and call it. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.